Welcome back to Gale Force Winds Season 2. The Gale Force Winds Podcast is proudly sponsored by Newfound Marketing, a digital marketing agency located in St. John's, Newfoundland. Visit our website at newfoundmarketing.ca to find out how we can help your business grow. Newfound Marketing, a compliment to your marketing team. In episode number 116, we introduced you to Fred George, a passionate Canadian who makes a positive impact in whatever he tackles. If you have not seen or heard that episode, we encourage you to do so before you continue with this one. In that episode, there was a reference to an astounding golf shot that Fred executed blindfolded while Bill Clinton looked on. What follows is Fred's account of that amazing evening. On the horizon. <laughs> what are you building next? As you know, there's always something on the horizon, but this is, we're gonna leave it as a, as a surprise okay. for your audience for the next uh, podcast, yes. for the next episode. Fred, there's one thing about you, there's a lot of episodes. Absolutely. There's a lot of episodes to be, uh, to look into. I've heard stories of you hitting golf balls blindfolded with Bill Clinton, look, Bill Clinton looking on in awe. I've heard incredible stories of things that you've done. We'll leave those for another time because Absolutely. a lot of people are gonna wanna hear about it. Well, Jerry, here we are in beautiful Bedford, Nova Scotia. And look, here we have Mr. and Mrs. Oh, George. How are you welcome, folks? Welcome, you made it. What a beautiful evening it is. And Absolutely. thank you for inviting thank us you. to your yeah. property. Absolutely. Tell us where we are located right now. Well, we're in Ali, in your little haven, Bedford, Nova Scotia, right in the end of Shore Drive. This is our little nest over here. We love this area. This is our home. This is uh, my yachts over there. And this is the two part green. This is the beautiful Bedford Basin. Yeah. What is it? Bedford Basin is a pretty special yeah, place. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. There's no doubt about it. Nice yeah. little spot. Bedford Yacht Club there. Look at all the sailing boats right now coming here, Jerry. Unbelievable picture. The sunset with the sailing boat. You're right here in the uh, end of the basin. And from here, you can take your yacht and go downtown and have a dinner. Well, this is Enjoy just this is just as beautiful as the Turks and Caicos a few months ago. It's spectacular. Unbelievably beautiful. Thank you for inviting Gale Force Winds into your home. Okay, I gotta keep up with my golf game. As you know, I told you last time about story with the President Clinton when we had a twenty-five thousand dollar bet, and this was unbelievable story. So, if you want me to tell you about it now, all the detail. I can take you in and show you exactly where it took a place and how I made that blindfolded golf shot. Blindfolded, 275 yards. Now Fred, you told me about that down in the Turks and Caicos. Yes. I didn't believe you. Yeah. We had to come here to see it, to see it unfold. Are you going to walk us through the whole thing? I'm going to walk you through the whole thing. Why don't we take the golf cart and we can go. If you want to come with me now, we're going to go where this thing took a place. Let's go see it. Let's do it. Do we have a caddy, Fred? We have a caddy, they'll come pick He's also up. a cameraman. A cameraman. <laughs> we have a cameraman no, and a one. caddy. <laughs> Here we go, Jerry. As if I'm not busy enough. Let's go. You grab the front, Jerry, I'll take the back. Fred, how long have you had this place out in Bedford? I've been here almost 30 years now. Is that right? Yeah, beautiful. It's unbelievable. So this is right up in the very end of the Bedford Basin. It's gorgeous. This is like a little heaven for me. Yeah. This is where we decide to build Nelly and I, and probably that's where we retire. Halifax has been a big part of your life, hasn't it? Halifax has been a beautiful place for me. We love Halifax, Nova Scotia. We are now Haligonian, and this place is a little haven. That's what we love about it. And this is the home of the East Coast, the Royal Canadian Navy, which is also a big part of your life, Fred. Absolutely, absolutely. Royal Canadian Navy, this is like they've been a part of my life for the last 20 some years. So this is where this thing took a place. Fred, don't hit that Lamborghini, whatever. We don't want to hit that Lamborghini. Oh, that's there's right. two of them. <laughs> don't hit either one. No, we don't want to hit none of them. Here we go. So, Fred, tell me where we're stood right now. Right now. This terrible is a, caddy. He just the caddy is terrible caddy. This is the place where 25 CEO arrive here with the President Clinton after we had a beautiful dinner inside to have a big competition here. 
In this space right, right here. Right in this space here. This is the screen. And I can turn it on and show you all the detail. And so Fred, it all happened right, right here, here, right in this space. Right in this beautiful room, as you can see. Okay, so I need you to tell me exactly how you did it. So you said the bet was $25,000. That's right. Tell me what it was. It started all, I was playing a game of golf with President Clinton at Pebble Beach and Fox Harbor. Frank McKenna and I and President Clinton, and I couldn't hit the golf ball. I just couldn't hit the, the game. The golf wasn't for me. I was always in the military, as you know, marksman. And rumor around the Navy is honorary Captain Fred George was one of the top shots. And here's just a highlight of what he's capable of. Are you ready? Stand by. Time, 273. 273. I was a pilot, diver, skier. Golf was too slow of a game for me. You know, you hit the golf ball, nobody hit back at you. That's how I was telling the president. And he goes to me, my God, Fred, you can't even make contact with that ball. Smart businessman like you, you can't even hit the ball. I said, Mr. President, I didn't like the game. But if you want, all I need two weeks practice and I will beat you guys all. And of course, you know, when somebody said that to a few golfers in two weeks, ha, 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 they all start laughing. They said, come on, we've been practicing for 20 years. You want to beat us in two weeks? I said, you know what? In two weeks, you're going to be in Halifax. He was coming to have a dinner at my place with 25 CEO. And I said, in those two weeks, I'll be ready for the competition. So two weeks practice, you said you could beat him. I can beat him. Beat everybody. How did you practice president. for it, Fred? What well, did you know do? I, did. I got myself that beautiful simulator you see here. Okay. And I came for two weeks every day, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. 3,000 ball every day, every, I didn't know you had to wear a glove. I was ripping my skin. Then I started wearing two gloves. I was breaking ball after you hit a thousand times, it will break. So, and without bringing any instructor here or anyone, I want to prove to everyone a difficult, but not impossible. As I always said to you, it could be done. So the trick was you come here and keep hitting the ball over and over and over again. And I remember telling myself this club have to go from one ear to the other ear. And most people say, what do you mean? Let me demonstrate uh, to you. Show me. So, so if you are here, most people, they will, most people, they will hit the golf. You know, they'll go like that and they do this. And that's not how it should be done. This one should go all the way, wrap it around from one ear to the other ear. So what I used to do here every day, put the ball over here and do something like this. And you finish here, that's what you gotta finish. So when you do that full swing 3,000 time every day, eventually your body, muscle memory, get the hang of it. Now, now that's half of the story. While I was practicing, I said, how about if I surprise everybody? So everyone asked me, well, what are you gonna do? How are you gonna surprise them? So why don't I try to beat everybody blindfolded? That's what started the whole things was in my head. So everybody, you bet everybody that you could drive further than them. Absolutely. And then you added on top of it that you do it blindfolded. I did that at the event. At the event. See, at the event, what happened is, picture now, 25 CEO. I said, you guys remember when I made a bet with everyone, I need two weeks and I will beat you all? They said, yeah, we remember. I said, you on for tonight. I want everybody to write check, thousand, 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 thousand. But. I want to earn those 25,000. It's 25 of you against me, one person. If any of you outdrive me, I will write a check for $25,000. Oh my God. So the President Clinton is sitting there, and I'll show you a picture where the President Clinton was sitting, and Frank McKenna was sitting there, and everybody said, wow, competition is on. So now what happened was, the first guy got in, and I don't know if you're a golfer or not, Alan, Jerry, I'm not well, My cameraman's a golfer. Oh, he is a golfer. Yeah, I am a golfer. So, so, so now, you know, Jerry, if you're a golfer, and another foursome came to watch you, it changed your swing. Right. So picture one of the guys just stepped in the first guy, and not another foursome watch him. You got the President Clinton. Right. You got Frank McKenna of the world. You got every CEO, Secret Service, CIA, Halifax Police. And I would say, Alan, step in and hit the ball. You got one swing, one ball. And we all had suit on, necktie. 
this ball will get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> You're nervous. The first 10 guys, they couldn't get off the tee. No. They couldn't get off the tee, 80 yards, 90 yards. Then the president stopped the game. He said, hold on a second, guys, hold on a second. He said, I played with Mr. George two weeks ago. He can't hit the ball. All you have to do, you guys trash player. Just make contact. You will beat him. <laughs> and sure enough, it worked. And the first guy came, bang, 200 yard, 220 yard, 230 yard, 240 yard. Were you getting nervous at this point? Nah, I mean, nervous. I was just having a fun with him. And I said, let them do whatever they want to do. I already have it in my mind what I'm going to do. And then the best guy, I remember Terry Cooper. He was here, uh, he's a hockey player, very strong guy. And he's the guy, believe me or not, and this guy, something we should bring him here and put him with us in that video. Before the two weeks, he showed me how to stand, how to hold the golf, uh, how to hold like the club in my hand, how you're gonna put your finger across, all that stuff. He showed me how to stand to hold it, and he said, good luck for you, in two weeks we'll be back. So he came in, he put the ball, and he had a 254 yard. Unbelievable, right. 254 yard. So now he walks next to me and he walks by me like this and the President Clinton said, and then he goes, all right, Mr. George, let me see you beat in this one. Right. So then I looked at the President, the President looked at me and he said, looks like you're gonna write a check for $25,000. <laughs> and I said, you know what, Mr. President? When people expect you to bring a rabbit out of the hat, you better come up with an elephant. And he goes, an elephant? How are you gonna pull an elephant? Like, I'd be happy with squirrel, with anything now. How are you gonna beat this one? I played with you two weeks ago. You can't even make contact. I said, that was two weeks ago. So I stepped in here, 25 CO watching, said, I want to up the ante. So I looked at them all. I said, all right, gentlemen, you're all my friend. You know how I play. How about you double your bet 2,000 each, and I will kick your ass in front of the president, William Jefferson Clinton, blindfolded. So now you're up to $50,000. Yeah. President's watching. Yes. And you say, I'm going to put a blindfold on. 100%. Were you nervous at this point? No, you can't be nervous. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Some people came to me and asked me, like Teddy Cooper. He said, can I talk to you? I said, yeah, go ahead. He said, have you asked yourself, blindfold You remember when President was telling you, keep your eye on the ball. If you lift your head, you miss. Blindfold it. Have you asked yourself, what about if I miss and fall on the floor? I said, Terry, if you ask yourself, what about if I miss? Don't hit no more because you're going to miss. You doubt it yourself. You must be certain. You see, our brain is the most powerful tool in our body. All you have to do is trust your brain, and your brain will deliver that to you. So at that time, I said, all right, we're ready. Everyone was ready. Remember the president? So they're all stood here. Everybody stood here. President uh, seated here. President stood up. seated. Everyone seated. We got a picture. I'll show you all the detail in the picture. You put what, the blindfold on. Put the blindfold on, and you can hear a pin drop in the room. Pin drop. And as you know, I can show you something here. Okay. So, so more, most of them at that time, they will take this and they will go like this. Most of them. Like most players, that's what they're gonna do. They go, they hold it up and do. So what I did from here, watch this. I torqued it like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, all the way to here. And then, wow, I spin it all the way to here. So the torque was so powerful, when I hit that ball, it was like a gunshot. All I heard the president, good God, good God, good God, good God, and all the ball on, on the screen, and my ball flew 275 yards, wow. blindfolded. Wow. You, should, you should hear the roar in the room. It went crazy. Now, Fred, a lot of people are gonna be watching. They're gonna say, no way. How do we prove this? You know what? Why don't you step here? We made a photo shoot. Show me Just, over this let way. Let me show Fred. you over this way. Let me show you over this way. Well, here's, here's, here are the pictures. Here's, here's the President Clinton, Frank McKenna, and this is all 25 CO, and here's me blindfolded. So now, from blindfolded golf shot, as you can see, you can see over here, it cleaned it right off the tee, and you can see the tee still moving. And after I hit the shot, look what everybody was doing. They just couldn't believe it. Look at the President, look how much he, look at Frank McKenna. 
Frank McKenna just laughing his head off. And that's Terry Cooper there who hit the 254-yard shot. He just couldn't believe it. And look at this here. When we came over here, he wanted to give me a hug. And we were so excited. Like, it was unbelievable night. Unbelievable night. When the president so, went back home, what happened then? He must oh, be telling his buddies about this. He was telling everyone about the shot. And next day, you know what he did? We flew to Toronto. Me, Frank McKenna, President Clinton, we had a meeting with President George Bush. And when we first met the President Bush, I remember President Clinton, he hugged me. He said, Frank, come here. We have to tell the President Bush what you did last night. And he looked at the president and he told him the whole blindfolded golf story. It was an unbelievable, unbelievable moment. And you know what he did? He sent me a beautiful letter, handwritten letter, with a three golf ball with the Oval Office stamp on it. You're and his name on it, yeah. And the letter read, uh, Dear Fred, this golf ball for the best blindfolded golfer I ever know. Again, you know again now, Fred, mo these golf stories have a tendency to, to, to live on in legends in a person's <laughs> mind. Do you have any proof of this at all? Oh, Where's yeah. the letter? Take a picture. Left us right there. You're kidding me. Here's a letter. And here's the golf ball. It's President Oval Office stamp. Right from the Oval Office. Right from the Oval Office. And this one here, as you can see, come directly from President Clinton. And here's what the letter read. Dear Fred, these are for the best blindfolded golfer I know. Best Bill Clinton. Well, I gotta tell you this, Fred. That's probably one of the best golf stories I've ever heard. And I live in Prince Edward Island. There's lots of good tales over there about golf. Yeah, yeah. But this is one so, of the better ones. I mean, I remember the president, you know, like picture now, they are here behind me and I'm here. And he asked me one question. He said, tell me, how much did you practice blindfolded? And what was your success rate? That was a good question. I said, Mr. President, I mean, I hit 10, I missed five, I hit five. I missed six, I hit four. He said, my God, man. He said, you had 50, 50 chance, and you still took the shot for $50,000. I said, you ask, what's the difference between me and all the other CEO? Even if I would have 1% chance, I still would have took the shot. <laughs> See, and then they were asking me a question, how did you manage to do it blindfolded? I said, I can teach you all how to do blindfolded stuff in 30 seconds. They said, what do you mean? I said, all right, here are you guys all here. I said, how about close your eye? And everyone close their eyes. I said, how about touch your nose? And everybody touch their nose. I said, open your eye. I said, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do this? Because you believe you can do it. So the trick of the shot, you must believe. If you don't believe, if you hesitate, you will miss. It's a pretty good lesson for life. Absolutely. Anything you do in this life, you must believe. You can do it. Okay, Fred. This has been yet another great chapter in the Fred George saga. There we go. What do you think will be next for us? What is the next story that we'll hear about? Oh, my God. I mean, I got so many stories. I don't know where to begin. Next time, we have to find the stories and just... Tell you, we'll surprise you. Put it okay. this way. We'll put a teaser out, and there'll we'll be another story, another story to come. This is Fred? a life. This is a fifty thousand dollar blindfolded golf shot. Now you know how it's done. You Thank gotta you. believe. Thank you for inviting us to your beautiful home right here in Bedford, Nova Scotia. And yeah. as always, real pleasure to chat with you, Fred. Another wonderful conversation on Gale Force Winds with Honorary Captain Fred George. We love you. Thank you so much, both of you, for coming. And I know you guys didn't believe me, but seeing is believing. For you guys to see the picture, read the letter, I'm sure you have no more hesitating in your beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. Good. Jerry, that was a fantastic episode. I love being at Fred's house. I love talking to him. And then I love the whole editing with him as well. How about you? Yeah, well, look, firstly, I want to mention the message he gave. Anything you can visualize and believe in your head, you can make happen. This is why we created Gale Force Winds, exactly for a story like this.
So much inspiration in uh, Honorary Captain Fred George's journey. And when he tells his story, he's so passionate about it. So the teaser for the next one, of course, Jerry, is Fred's going to talk to us a little bit about public speaking. And you and I both know how hard public speaking can be. And a real celebration of a good public speaker is a standing ovation. But it's very difficult to get a standing ovation in the first minute of your speech. That's what Fred's going to tell us about. I honestly, when you told me about this, you had me from the very first moment. I've done a lot of public speaking, never gotten a standing ovation, surely not in the first minute. It's going to be an exciting one. Pay attention. Thank you for tuning in to Gale Force Winds. That's Gale Force Winds, W-I-N-S dot com.